The last time I had a laptop was back in middle school and it was an HP Pavilion. And now that is in no means a gaming laptop, but being 11 years old and a super hardcore gamer, that didn't mean anything to me. I mean, when you're 11, 20 FPS is like, you're good to go. But since then, I've always been a desktop user and I love my current setup right now. I have an amazing graphics card, amazing CPU, so that when I edit these videos, it comes out super great. But also, when I make music, making music has never been better. I can make music really well, plugins process really easily, and it's just a great time for me. However, having a girlfriend that lives out of state requires a lot of responsible travel. So in order to take my setup with me, I gotta size down a little bit. Obviously, I can't take my desktop and put it into the trunk of my car. It's just too much hassle. So I need some sort of setup that I can take along the way, a travel friendly setup, if you will. So I've been able to do that. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys today. What's up geniuses, my name is Adriel Vera, and welcome back to the channel where you learn to show your genius. I gotta show you guys something. Welcome back to the mall. So, as you can see, do we have a silver play button yet? No! However, we can if we get 100,000 subscribers. Now, the goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and if you don't know already, I made a series about the road to 100,000 subscribers. It's still going on, because obviously, I haven't reached 100,000 subscribers yet, but we're projected to reach 10,000 on July 19th. So, that means in a month, we'll be at 10,000, and we've been growing pretty fast. So if you wanna to continue to watch that journey and join us in that process so you can learn all the things that I'm doing to get to that point, feel free to click the icon up here. It'll take you to the playlist where you start on the first episode. So now, what's your job? It's to subscribe so we can get closer to that milestone and so we can all celebrate together. This wall does not need to be blank because this section of the wall has been blank for too long. So the first thing in my setup, which is probably often overlooked, is the backpack. Now, if you're gonna be going anywhere, having something that you can carry, your portable studio setup is gonna be completely necessary because how else are you gonna have your laptop, your MIDI controller, your headphones, everything. So this backpack is a Heinz Eagle backpack that's 38 liters and I actually really love this thing. Found it on Amazon for about 40 bucks and it has all the functionality that I need for my portable studio setup. I mean, the material is decent quality. It's nothing too special, but what do you expect from something from Amazon? Obviously, there's a lot of good products on Amazon. This is one of them, but it's not like Gucci or anything like that. So we have three main compartments here. The first compartment is for whatever you want to put in here. Let's say you want to bring an extra mouse, an extra little portable keyboard. This can fit that as well as your toothbrushes, whatever you need to travel. It's just a small pouch, nothing too special. However, the magic happens in this pouch. As you can see, got some cables in here already. However, there's this pouch and this is where you would put your laptop. You can stuff your laptop in here. You're good to go. You have this other room for things like your MIDI controllers, Maybe you got your headphones you want stuff in here. It's good for you as well. But the main reason why I wanted to get this laptop, aside from the looks, because I really like how it looks, is the main compartment here. Now, this is what you call a front-loading backpack. And obviously, like I said, if you're traveling for a week, you're gonna need some sort of clothes, some change of clothes, and having a front-loading backpack is gonna give you all of the space you need to carry whatever it is you need to carry. So you can think of it like luggage. And basically you open this up, you get your stuff in here, your clothes, your toothbrushes, your toothpaste, your deodorant, whatever you need, stuff it in here, good to go. And like I said, 38 liters, it's basically the size for any sort of carry-on. I don't fly too much, humans can't fly, but airplanes can. And if you're planning on going on an airplane, the maximum is usually around 40 liters. So something around the 38 liters range is gonna be good for most airlines. If I go to LA for some sort of record label meeting, you can bet I'm gonna be bringing that backpack with me. The next thing in my portable studio setup is a MIDI controller. Now this is the Novation Launch Key Mini. I love this MIDI controller. I don't have too many MIDI controllers. This is one of the two that I own. However, I definitely love hardware. This makes the production workflow so much easier, so much nicer, so much smoother. This controller itself syncs really well 
with FL Studio. I know this is meant more for Ableton. However, being an FL Studio user, I found a lot of use out of this as well. It's my favorite MIDI controller because it's so small, so portable. So for this setup, it's perfect. And I used to have it on my desk. Now it just sits in my backpack all the time whenever I need to go somewhere. So for a hundred bucks, you're gonna be getting a good deal out of this. It's gonna integrate well with whatever you're doing. The keys are really nice. And I did a whole review on this keyboard if you wanna check it out by clicking the icon up here. It'll take you to that review. I love this keyboard. However, there's some other keyboards out there that you might wanna look into that's around the same price range. The Akai Fire, if you're an FL Studio user, integrates completely with FL Studio. I have not tried that yet, but I got plans to try it in the future and let you know what I think. Like I said, this is my favorite MIDI controller. However, the Akai Fire, by the looks of it, might be a little better for FL Studio. I'll have to see though. So when it gets to the mixing and mastering stage of those beats that you've been producing on your portable setup, you're gonna need something to actually listen to those beats. You're gonna need some audio equipment. And if you're using a laptop, which you are going to be using if you have a portable setup, you know the laptop speakers aren't meant for mixing and mastering. You can find some pretty good laptop speakers. However, they're not gonna be good quality for what you're doing. You can't get that in depth with your mix on laptop speakers. I'm sure there's some people that have done it before, but you're probably a very small amount of people. So in order to get that good sound quality for your mixes, for your masters, you need some sort of audio gear. And having studio monitors like speakers are not that great of an option to bring along with you in your bag because obviously their whole speakers, they're too big to really carry around. And I mean, I guess if you get small enough ones, it'd be portable, but the best option here to me is getting a set of headphones that work well with your setup. So what I use is the Biodynamic DT770 Pros. I've made a video about this as well if you wanna go check it out. The review is in the icon up here. These are amazing headphones, I love these, and they're about $150. So they're not super pricey, but I definitely think they're probably the best headphones you could probably get. And the reason being is because the range of these headphones is five hertz to 35,000 kilohertz. So you can hear basically more than the average human hearing. And not saying you would pick up every single one of those frequencies, but having that huge frequency response range, that's gonna make it so much easier to mix because you're gonna have so much, I guess, data available for you, if you wanna put it that way. I've gotten hours of use out of these things, and especially since the ear cups go completely around your ear, you're not gonna have to worry about strain on your earlobes. I know for a fact, with my old headphones, my Audio Technicas, they would sit right directly on my earlobe and after like six, seven hours of use, my ears start to hurt because obviously having that pressure on your earlobes is gonna get sore. But the good thing with these headphones is that they go completely, I had a piece of hair on my headphones. They go completely around your ears so you don't gotta worry about the uncomfortableness. It's gonna be comfortable because you're not having that pressure. And I've been able to wear these things for hours on end, like 12 hours plus and Obviously, if you wanna keep your ears healthy, having something that's comfortable to wear is gonna keep you happy. This is the 250 ohm version, and this is meant for audio interfaces because since there's more resistance, having higher, not higher, but more powerful hardware is gonna be required to get a good volume out of these set of headphones. But surprisingly, I've been able to plug these into my laptop and they still sound decently loud. It's not like they, they're quiet by any means. So the 250 ohm version is what I have and I've been able to use it with my portable setup, which is amazing. And if you want these headphones, there's an 80 ohm version that's meant for like universal use. So laptop would be fine with that. If you have a desktop that doesn't have an audio interface, you'd be fine with that as well. But there's also a 30 ohm version that's like meant for phones and laptops. So depending on how your setup is gonna be, look into that stuff. I have the 250 ohm version. It doesn't cost anything extra. They all cost the same. It's just different resistance. I definitely think though that these are good headphones. And now we have the piece de resistance or whatever it's called. I don't know what the word is. A laptop is essential to the setup because obviously if it's portable, you can't have a desktop. A laptop is what's necessary. Like I said, I haven't had a laptop since middle school. So since middle school, laptops have gotten a lot stronger. The crazy thing about this laptop is it's basically as powerful as my desktop. And being a video editor, a music producer, I need something that's powerful. So I found this, well, not me, my brother found this laptop 
Shout out to my brother. He's a computer wizard. He found this laptop for me, the ROG Zephyrus G14. This is like the best of the best. I love this laptop so much. It's around $1,500, but I cannot stress how worth this laptop is. This is a gaming laptop. ROG literally stands for Republic of Gaming. However, the reason why I got this wasn't for gaming. I got it for video editing, one, but two, making music. Now you don't need anything super powerful to make music. I think the minimum for FL Studio is having an i5 processor, and that's like generations ago. Right now, Intel has the i9. This laptop has an AMD Ryzen 9. Now it doesn't use Intel's processor, but it uses an AMD, and AMD has stepped up their game. The Ryzen 9 is basically as powerful as an i9. However, like I said, a $1,500 laptop as powerful as an i9, that's crazy. Usually if you want an i9 in the laptop, you're paying over $3,000. Having something super powerful at such an affordable cost, it's crazy. It's, a, it's mind blowing. And with all that processing power, video editing, like I said, exporting that stuff, it's super easy. The rendering process is just smooth. But another thing, since we're talking about music production here, and this is a music production setup, having that processor, putting in plugins into this thing, plugins will run super smoothly on this thing and latency won't be an issue because the processor is just so dang good. FL Studio runs on this thing amazingly. I have not had any problems whatsoever. And for sure, this is up to par with a lot of expensive stuff, especially Razer gaming laptops, if you're familiar with those. Now, since this is a gaming laptop, it has a dedicated graphics card. It has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q. For music production, graphics card isn't really necessary. However, for video editing, which I do a lot of, this is necessary to get those playbacks to look great. And if you are an independent artist and you make your own cover arts, you make your own music videos like how I do, you edit videos, maybe you have your own YouTube channel that you post your stuff on, having a graphics card is gonna make those processes a lot easier because you can just smoothly play back everything that you're doing. Now, one thing you might've noticed while showing off this laptop are the dimples that it has. And these dimples actually light up if you get the right version. My version doesn't light up at all. I made sure to get a screen with a super crazy refresh rate because I just like that. However, there's versions where this lights up and you can display whatever the heck you want. You can have your handles there. So let's say you're at the library working on some beats. You have your headphones in. If anybody's looking at your laptop, they'll see your name at whatever if you want to put it there and display it, which is really cool. If you're a DJ and you're doing some DJ stuff, what's really nice is that you'll be able to display some cool light shows at the back of this thing. And if you want to actually put like an image, it will display that pretty well. Now these lights aren't RGB. They're not gonna display a super crazy image, but you can get creative with that and display some pretty cool things. Now, this laptop is not perfect. I've had some issues with it before. This is my second laptop of this model. The first one that I ordered that was sent to me had a lot of problems, a lot of issues. Basically, the screen would black out, the battery wouldn't charge, and it would be stagnant at a certain percentage if you tried charging it, and the screen would glitch out with all these different colors and it was terrible. Now I gave ROG a second chance. I returned my laptop and got it exchanged for a new version of it. And this has not had any problems whatsoever. However, that first laptop I had a lot of bad experience with and a lot of people have also had some pretty bad experiences with it as well. I took a chance, got it again, and now it's amazing. I love it. Couldn't be any happier with it. But let's say I wasn't willing to take that chance. It was my first impression, the first laptop I had ever gotten. Imagine how bad that would have been. So keep that in mind when looking at this laptop. I've not had a lot of issues. A lot of people love this laptop as well. And I'm sure more people have had positive experiences than negative experiences. And if you have a negative experience, you could probably turn that around into a positive one if you just get it replaced. Now I have an Amazon link to this in the description. It's an affiliate link. And if you purchase through that, I get a little kickback that helps support the channel, but it doesn't charge you any extra. However, this is really expensive on Amazon. It's definitely not worth buying through there. I still have the link just in case anybody wants to look and you're more comfortable on Amazon. The prices might drop. The sellers might actually change the price to a fair price. I got mine on Best Buy and I'm financing this. So I would recommend that. Like I said, I know people are comfortable on Amazon. Check it out. See if the price is good enough for you. 
Like I said, I paid around 1500 for this. So make sure you're getting a good deal. Also, I'll have Amazon links to all the other things I talked about in this video in the description too. The last thing in my portable studio setup, which isn't really music, is this 8-bit though gamepad controller. Now, it is a gaming laptop. So I played Halo Reach on there. I played Borderlands 3. Having this little controller that's wireless that connects to a bunch of different consoles. This could connect to the Switch, which I have, my laptop, my phone. I could also play Wired. It has a great battery life and the look of it is just cool. I think it looks amazing. I have a lot of fun with this. It feels great. So I put this in my backpack all the time too. Carry it with me everywhere I go, just in case I want to do some gaming. Like I said, that's not my main focus with the setup but it's cool to have nonetheless. If you wanna spend $40 on a controller, if you're planning on doing some gaming, check this out. Link is also in the description. Not sponsored, I just love it by the way. So that's my portable studio setup. Tell me what you guys think. Say yes in the comments if you like it. No, if you don't. Like I said, all the Amazon links are in the description. If you wanna check those out, I get a little kickback whenever somebody uses those links with no extra charge to you. So it just helps support the channel, helps keep things going. So I can continue to make videos like this and hopefully in the future, I can upgrade the setup with even more affordable things that'll help you guys with your music and your production in general. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. That wall needs a silver play button. The goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and we got a series about that. So if you wanna check out the series, The Road to 100,000 Subscribers, make sure you click the icon up there. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. Stay safe out there. Eat a lot of oranges, but most importantly, don't be afraid to show your genius. Baby, you call me, you tell me you love me. Get you, but I've been so up in my room quarantine.